Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Um, <clears throat> I keep having this beef. <laughs> it's with bushcrafters, of course. People I completely uh, associate with. People I love hanging around and talking to. But, you know, it's it's it, it becomes so faddish. You know, it becomes... Um, from pictures and videos I see of people with brand new, never used kit talking about how great it is and how much they've enjoyed using it and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I get what I can get and I use the heck out of it. And if it lasts and it does the job, then I enjoy it. Uh, but that's not always the situation. <laughs> Quite often it's stuff that just doesn't, you know, cut the beans for me. Just doesn't make it, you know? And, um... Example, I see these flash photos of guys in the woods, even some gals, and uh, which I like to see a lot more gals in the woods. But, uh, um, you know, bushcraft has become this thing where sex is sort of selling. So what you see is you see some, some uh, very attractive young lady in the woods, especially the Asian market has this thing coming up. And they've done this with primitive... Um, technology i believe and this guy had a great web a great youtube channel and he's got millions of subscribers uh, and he used to wear just the black shorts and go out and do primitive technology you know like uh he never brought an axe with him he, he did everything from what he found in nature and i believe he lives in australia or new zealand but anyway he stopped he completely just stopped and just like that clack just stopped. But then you see all of these very f fake um, Asian uh, sites that came up. And nothing against the Asians at all when it comes to bushcraft. Those who, who like, from anywhere else in the world, are using um, true testing tech, uh, you know, ex experience. You know, we're not seeing some fake thing. You know, like uh, like what you see as them, you know, they're building, they're digging these, uh, these underground swimming pools, this kind of stuff. Yeah, they're building it, but, uh, you know... <laughs> Oh my god. Anyway, uh, or these fake fishing where they're they're actually stuffing fish into a hole that they pre-dug and then they're showing you how to pull these fish out, this kind of stuff. It's just sort of you know, it, it just it's unnecessary. It's really unnecessary. I mean, uh and then now you're seeing this young lady, she's like half naked, um and um believe me, I like nudity like the next guy. You know, I like uh, to see naked women. I'm not gonna, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna hide that, you know. I love women. I'm not a misogynist, but, um, but it's so fake though. It's like she's using sex, her body to entice men to her channel and okay, you use what you got, but don't sit there and complain about it when, you know, there's always going to be a negative response. You know, every positive response is going to be a negative side. Whatever thing you do, there's going to be a response to it, you know, in some way or another, whether you like it or not. And mine, I guess is a bit negative because I just, I just, you know, <clears throat> Ooh, my cats are getting angry in there. I just don't like it. Uh, you know, I just don't like seeing it. I guess when I'm when I'm concentrating on 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 bushcraft and the outdoors, of course I like. I don't mind. You know, a beautiful woman or whatever. You know, but that's just not the point of what this video is supposed to be about. I mean, um, yeah, bothers me, bothers me a little bit. I guess you know when you, you know, I'm busting my butt making videos busting my butt i'm enjoying myself making these videos i'm not really hurting anything it doesn't cost me anything to do it i really enjoy doing what i do but i'm also putting in my experience you know and i've got you know i'm, I'm 53 years old i've been doing this since you know since i was a young boy a very young boy in the outdoors making fires uh, building shelter um and i didn't have much to do it with and you can read it you can see it in my previous videos you can see it on my vlogs this kind of stuff um, in my blogs also that I, you know, I, I did, I made do with what I had from fishing to hunting, to living in outdoors, to trapping, to everything else I've been involved in growing up. Uh, and then in my military career, uh, what the army gave me, I didn't, we didn't have this, this huge, uh, back door behind us of all these great modern ideas, concepts and equipment, this kind of stuff that we could use. We had to use what was, what was given us at that time, you know, and this was back in the eighties and nineties. Unlike today, where they have some great equipment, the soldiers do, you know, really good equipment. But back in the day, you know, it wasn't so much, you know. But um, I think when I see um, <clears throat> these videos uh, or this, what I, you know, I call it backyard bushcrafting, 
where you see people just basically walking their backyard. They got a they got a wood line in the background, and and they're making these these videos where you see them pull out five knives. You know who I don't carry five knives with me when I go to the field. You know, or you know, or they got all this. Um, I don't know. I get the impression that what they're primarily looking for is sponsorship or something. You know, um, and I find that a little bit offensive to to what you know. I I believe bushcraft should be about. You know, you know. I, I look. I loved attending the Ray Mears course when I went to it. But uh, the negative side is if you saw something that you had a question about, the instructors would tell you, listen, you have to take the next course to find out about that. And for me, I thought that was dis not, uh, disingenuous. You know, I thought that was really dishonest, you know. Um, <clears throat> but that's the way they want to run things, the way they run things. And because of that, I didn't take any more courses. I was like, well, shoot, I mean, I'm just going to go out and learn on my own or, you know, from other people. I'm not going to spend all that money to go out there and take another course. I do agree that you need to take courses to, in the very beginning, but I, as an instructor, I hide nothing from the participants. If I don't know something, I tell them I don't know it. If I do know something, I tell them my experience about it and how I can help them to learn it. And, and I push the whole concept of not just learning from me, but learning in general, get out there and do it, you know? Um, and most of my participants, most clients that I have to come into bushcrafting with me, um, after the first course, there's really not much more that I don't charge them for, cause I, for inviting them to go camping with me after that. And we go out and we continue learning, you know, and continue practicing together. I don't do that. I don't think it's necessary. I don't, I don't like the whole idea of it. I don't, I think it's, you know, I'm trying to pick up people, build a community around me. And I introduce them to it through that way. And then we go on from there, you know, and I think that's what's important also. Continue the education and learning, learning new things. I don't know it all. Um, will I ever know it all? No. <laughs> and, you know, that it's just the way it is. I mean, I just, there's a lot more to learn, you know, but, but when I see these backyard bushcrafters, okay, out there with brand new equipment, you know, you got your beautiful backpacks and your beautiful blankets and your beautiful cups and gloves. The only stuff dangling off someone's backpack. Of course, they're not worried about it because they're only going out for the afternoon or maybe that evening. We don't see them sleeping out there, you know. We don't see what they're really doing, you know. Uh, or you're in the middle of wintertime and you get all these brand new photographs from stuff that people have done in the summer, you know. Oh, it's, it's great, you know, summertime, you know, seasonal bushcrafting, you know. Okay, you go when you want to go. Okay, limit yourself to what you want to learn and what, what your experience wants to be, you know. But uh, <clears throat> it's not the same outdoor experience, winter and summer. It's not the ex same experience whatsoever. It's not the same outdoor experience when it's raining and you've already planned it out and you say, you know, I'm still going to go for it, you know. It's not the same experience. You're going to get a different experience out of it. And you're going to learn more about yourself, about your equipment, and about your capabilities and what you like and don't like. Now, sure, I, I don't like camping out in the rain, but I do like being with my friends around a fire. So if that's what it takes, then hey, that's what I'm willing to do. Get that knowledge. Anyway, seeing a backpack in a photograph, some guy, um, and he's got all kinds, I mean, he's got his wool blanket exposed and, and to the to the elements, to the dirt and to all this kind of stuff. And, and, or he's got his cup hanging off, claiming that, well, it's the best way for it to dry. And he's got his gloves dangling around. Where, you know, your gloves, you want to, first of all, not lose them. Second of all, you want to protect them so that they can protect you. You know, you want to keep them inside of a pocket, you know, on you. You don't want to, I don't, I don't dangle my gloves off my backpack. My gloves are in my pockets because I want to be able to pull them out quickly and put them on if I need them. Okay. Uh, in the wintertime, I wear them. Okay. <coughs> so... It's not, it's not a, a concept. And I change them out. I have a winter gloves and summer gloves. Yeah, of course. Summertime, I'll be I'll less likely to go out with my winter gloves. I'll use my summer gloves. And I use them around the fire. I use them when I'm working with my axe and knives. I use them this way because I want to protect my hands as much as possible. You know, because I've already made that mistake a number of times in my life. And I've learned from it. Um, and so I don't want to lose them. I've, I've seen people lose stuff, get snagged off their backpacks, just kind of like that. But of course, you're not worried about that if you're just walking into your backyard or you're pulling out your car and you're walking, you know, 20 feet off the road and having your experience off of a lay, you know, off like that, you know, and you're filming it and picturing it and giving this big, you know, I have, I, I knew, I knew somebody who did that, you know, he made this big story. He said, and he still has this huge YouTube channel, 
uh, in Alaska. And I know for a fact he can't uh, walk more than a kilometer. But he makes out like he's out there doing hundreds of kilometers in the Alaskan wilderness. Um, all camouflaged up, looking like some kind of a some kind of a mythic warrior or like that. And the guy's never served a day. Okay, that's not the big deal. The big deal is that uh, you're running around out there making like something else, selling that to people as if it's real, and people believe you, and you and, and you act also like you are the you are the um, you're the end all know it all of all this stuff, you know. It's like <clears throat> in the early days, I remember there was this military channel um forum actually it was very interesting. I can't remember the name of it. Militaryphotos.net, I believe is what it was. And <clears throat> I had some kid attack me, and I knew it was a kid because the way he spoke. He must have been 13 years old attacking me about what I didn't know about what I did in the army. That he he of course knew better. <laughs> Of course, these internet warriors, you know. <coughs> Am I any better? I don't know. Am I any better for making this video talking about all this right here? I really don't know, you know. But when I know that I go to try to find information or find to learn something, I'm going to those people who are out there really doing it. Not just doing it for money on, on, on the internet or, 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 you know. I mean, and I don't have a problem with you making money on the internet. I hope someday maybe I get that way. I mean, that'd be really nice to be able to just do what I love doing and make money, earning money doing it. That, that'd be fantastic. You know, that's the dream, uh, for every, anybody and everybody, you know, but, uh, but back, back, you know, back, backyard bushcrafters, you know, and uh, a few, they know who they are. And, uh, I doubt they watch any videos of anybody else because they're too busy watching their own videos. Uh, but there are a few of them out there and I've gotten in some discussions with them. They didn't like it too much. You don't like being called out. They get really offended and butthurt. I mostly see it coming out of, out of America. Um, especially a lot of really overweight guys who, uh, who, uh, have really nasty looking beards. I like myself <laughs> who are out there, um, showing up with two saws, five knives, 50, you know, and a whole bunch of food, but nothing much more than that. You know, I mean, uh, living in hammocks in the wintertime. I mean, I just sort of, for me, bushcraft is about living comfortably in the outdoors all season round. It, it's about being able to go out there and escape, but, and, and live this, not necessarily an alternate life, but a life that you prefer to, to sort of hang out in and be in. Now, some some people that's only for a few hours, and some people that's you know they go out there for weeks at a time, you know. And there's some people who are actually living that life, and I'm <laughs> I would love to be able to live that life, but um, this is not the way it's sort of been. It's come up to me, you know. Maybe I don't have the cojones to, to try to live that life. I don't know. But one thing I can say is that um, you know you want to learn from those who 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 know. And, um, and, and from what I see, a lot of those who know are not changing their backpacks out every month, you know, and of course that's a commercial. If they're selling stuff, I understand that because I sell stuff myself, but I'm still running around with the same day pack, a 35 liter, um, Berghaus Monroe that I've had. It's got two buckles on it. They're broken now. I need to replace for the past, you know, 17 years I've had that pack. 15 to 17 years, maybe even more. I love that pack. It's very simple, you know. It doesn't have 50 zippers on it and all these hidden pockets. But it does exactly what I need it to do. And it's organized the way I, I like it and it fits me. Now, is that for everybody? Probably not. I don't, I don't expect it to be for everybody. But I found what I like and I stay with what I like, you know. And um, I'm not trying to sell myself as a one and all package here. I mean, I know what I know. I'm learning all the time. And, um, and we'll see how that works out, but back to those little pet peeves, you know, dangling all this stuff off your rucksack unprotected. It's a risk you want to take, you know, it's a risk you want to follow. I mean, you get your, you've never slept cold until you've not slept because your gear is wet and cold. Um, I'm gonna give you two quick, well, three quick examples. Alaska one time we were there, no real winter gear in the snow, and we shivered for three days under spruce trees. Okay, we were able to build little fires, but that's about it. 
just in poncho liners and jungle boots. That was cold. Okay. Unexpected thing happened and we ended up going there. Um, and it was a suck fest, but you know, I'm, I'm here today. Next time Yakima, um, inside of a tent of all places, a really nice tent that they set up for us. We got up inside of it, had a, um, a pot belly stove in there with uh, JP eight and, uh, and something else, diesel and JP eight or something like that inside of a, it was feeding it. And the line was leaking on my, on the foot of my sleeping bag. Cause I actually was able to take my sleep. Well, able to access my sleeping bag as an old, uh, the old mountain down sleeping bags that we had gotten back then. And it got, it got full of, um, what do you call it? Uh, that fuel and I almost caught frostbite because of it. It was so cold. And then, um, what was that third time? I can't remember now. <laughs> Most about it had been a bad of an experience, but, uh, I tell you, I've slept cold and, um, it's not fun. And I don't suggest, I mean, I've almost gotten hypothermia, not the hypothermia. I mean, we had, I mean, I've dealt with weather and its extremes, everything from Fort Polk, Louisiana to the jungles of Panama to, Oh yeah, well the um, before we crossed the border, or after we'd crossed the border, yeah, after we crossed the border into um, um, the re the neutral zone of between Iraq and Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, there was a neutral zone that we had crossed over into. Our team did, and um, a storm hit, and it was so cold, and I got completely wet. And of course, living out of rucksack, we, I mean, there was nothing else, and we were. I got completely wet and was cold for couple of days, you know, you walk around with just your wet, um, wrung out, um, poncho line around you. And that was a cold winter there. But, um, I've, I've had to deal with the cold. The heat is, uh, is not funny at all either. Very, very ugly. All this stuff, you know, the wet, all this stuff. Uh, but anyway, once you've experienced it, you don't forget it. And you learn how to, if you've learned something from it, you learn how to, that you don't like it and you want to uh, deal with it differently. Um, if you've seen one of my last videos we put out, um, I was out for two nights, three days in, in the winter, very, uh, just after a winter storm, it hit very, very cold. Uh, and, uh, um, it was down to minus seven degrees Celsius and we had some cold nights there, but I was lucky enough to have brought the right gear with me because after all these years, that's what I do. I'm willing to take on the extra bit of weight and extra bit of volume to do that. You know, so that means I have to have a bigger rucksack to fill it up halfway with a, with a sleeping bag that supports, uh, the weather. Okay. And it did a great job. No question about it. Um, sadly, my, my partner in crime that was right with me, he got cold the first night because, uh, of problems with, uh, the mat, uh, his mats he were using to kept deflating. And so he kept getting that cold air coming up and until we were able to remedy that. But uh, anyway, so that first night he was cold. Second night he was fine. But still, he's also learned that he needs a better, he needs to improve upon his sleeping bag even more uh, because the defense four and minus uh, seven degrees is not enough. If you're, if you know what I'm talking about. And those of you who know, who know what a defense four is, you understand. It's a great sleeping bag, but you need a bit more. Um, but anyway, listen, yeah, 20 minutes for a freaking video t uh, talking negative. I'm probably not going to post this, <laughs> but if I do, you <laughs> you may have turned it off already. Anyway, I hope you all have a good night. Listen, like my channel, subscribe, share, make comments, and um, and I hope you all have a good evening. Goodbye.